Welcome to the USU Career Studio podcast that helps you navigate your career path. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to tell your friends and family all about it. Subscribe to our podcast on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, or anywhere else you listen to get access to our newest content. Thanks for joining us for our Friday face-to-face episode. I'm Marissa Armistead, your host, and I'm excited to welcome alum and social worker Christine Conrado to the show. Welcome, Christine. Thank you. So excited to have you. And, you know, this month we're really diving into the College of Humanities and Social Sciences and some of the possible career paths students might choose to pursue after graduation. So, Christine, to kind of center our conversation today, I would love to start by hearing about your (laughs) unique career path. Um, It's maybe atypical of what a student might expect. So I am really excited. Um, Let's just start with, talk to us about your degree and jobs leading up to today. Yeah, perfect. So I um, graduated in 2005 with my psychology degree, bachelor's in psychology and a minor in family human development. And I, after I graduated, I was like, what am I going to do? And I really didn't even know what kind of job to get with a psychology degree, to be honest. Um, and so I actually ended up working at Logan High as the attendance secretary for SOF. So I worked there for a year, um, loved it, but, you know, wanted to move to the big city. So I moved to Salt Lake for one year and I worked as a um, preschool um, teacher assistant and then um, moved back to Logan. Um, And while in Logan, I actually just to kind of make some extra money, I was a nanny for a family member for like the summer. And then I ended up working at in a production company for about a year. And I also in the meantime there, I felt like I needed something that was more fulfilling. And I worked at Woodruff Elementary as a paraprofessional. And then After that, I actually ended up getting a job at Head Start as a family advocate, which is more of the social work kind of avenue. Um, Did that for about five years or so. Um, And then decided to move forward, wanted to make a little bit more money. Um, And I actually ended up quitting. And then I worked at, um, it was like around the time when Obamacare came on. So I worked in the insurance industry um, for about a year at a community health clinic. And then after that, I was like, it wasn't as busy as I wanted it to be. And so um, I actually started applying for different jobs, um, case management jobs. And I ended up actually getting a job at DCFS um, as a child protective service um, worker. So I was on the front lines of child welfare. And I did that for about four and a half years. And I really, really liked working with the severely mentally ill population. And so I decided to work in the behavioral health unit or applied and got the job. And so I do discharge planning at Logan Regional Hospital in the behavioral health unit for its acute um, facility for individuals who are suicidal um, in imminent danger um, of you know, either um, dying by suicide or homicidal um, or just psychotic and, you know, um, suffering from psychosis or mania or something like that. So mentally, mental illnesses. So, and that's where I'm at now. And then now I'm also a current um, master's student in the social work department. So at Utah State. So (laughs) Fabulous. Wow. Well, what I, you know, what I love about this is, is you, you show us that careers aren't linear. And I think this is a a common myth and misconception that students have post-graduation is, you know, I have this degree, therefore I'm going to get this job and it's going to lead to X outcome. But I love that you've, you've talked us through what real life looks like and and it's messy and (laughs) figure things out as you go. So I love that. Um, Christina, I would love to have you share with us kind of a day in the life. What, what does your job look like on a day-to-day basis? So currently my job is I work, um, so every morning at eight o'clock we meet with the treatment team. So it's the um, therapist, which is a licensed clinical social worker, um, the psychiatrist, which is an MD, so he's a medical doctor, the nurse, um, who is literally 
caring for the patients all the time. <laughs> um, and we all meet, and then I, we all meet as the social work, um, in a sense, discharge planner is what I technically am. We meet, we talk about patients, what their needs are. Um, and then if we have new patients, I meet with them. I go into their rooms and talk about, you know, what kind of resources they need. Um, if they're seeing a psychiatrist, who their primary care doctor is, if they need a therapist. And then that's pretty much my job. So I'm, I'm definitely more behind the scenes. Um, I sometimes plan people's lives for them post discharge. <laughs> so, um, you know, if we have individuals that need Medicaid applications, or, you know, they need to get into Bear River mental health or things like that. So I know who has openings, you know, I network with other agencies so that our patients when they leave are connected to other resources in the valley. And sometimes we get patients outside of the valley. So that's my job. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And I'm curious. So what kind of drove you to go back and get your, your degree in social work? Um, I think I personally got to a point where not that I've topped off in my growth, um, but a bachelor's degree. And I'm also in the middle of when I was working at DCFS, I got my social service worker degree, um, which anyone can get. They just have, you just have to take specific classes, like three classes um, for that. And I just kind of feel like as a bachelor's level, I'm kind of, my wings are not, can't spread. <laughs> And so I, I've decided that in order to spread myself even wider and learn more things, um, getting a master's is the way to go. So I, I supervise an intern every year, a bachelor level intern, and I highly recommend they always just, just go for it. If you, if you have the energy left, just go for it. <laughs> Cause it's, yeah. it's definitely, it's a good thing. Like you, you can do even more with a master's. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Great insights. Well, and I'm curious, that kind of leads me into one of the questions that I had for you, which is, you know, if a student is interested in the field of social work, maybe they haven't quite identified which niche they're, they're wanting to go into, mm -hmm. you know, what kinds of opportunities, you know, is it, is it internships? Is it volunteering? What do you recommend students do to kind of test this field out? Yeah. So their internships are super important, but you know, you only, they only get one year of an internship. And so you can volunteer, but there's a lot of, because in social work, confidentiality is so, you know, um, big. There's, and then like at a hospital to volunteer in the behavioral health unit, it's just unknown. I mean, you just don't do it. And then DCFS, I mean, I don't think we ever had volunteers. They, people bring donations, but it's not like you can really volunteer your time because, well, confidentiality sure. right um but there's I think other avenues where like you you know you could go to like an assisted living or um, a skilled nursing facility um you could you know go to Head Start they have tons of volunteer opportunities there so volunteer is good but I think really kind of experience and really one thing I've found out is I don't, I, you know, for, I think in a lot of maybe other fields, like if you're only there for five years, people are like, oh, so you can't keep a job. But in social work, it's like, oh, you have this, you have that, you've been worked here, you, and it's like, it really builds your resume to have so many experiences, right? I mean, if you only last maybe six months, like, you know, people might be like, oh, but five years is, is about pretty good experience. You know, your job pretty well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's helpful. Well, and I'm curious kind of, kind of on the similar vein, I, I suppose, which, um, you know, let's say maybe in five years, my goal is to be a, a licensed social worker. What are mm -hmm. some like entry level job titles that I maybe would start Googling or kind of looking into if I was trying to get to that end goal of being a social worker? Yeah. So I, one thing I've learned in social work is, is a job that mentoring is so important. Um, and so you want to get a job somewhere where you, you could have great supervisors. 
um, or supervision because you start as a, you know, getting your master's in social work, but then you have to take exams to get licensed and then you need your hours. And so um, in order to become a licensed clinical social worker, you definitely want to have, um, you know, great mentors that you can, that can teach you. Um, that's one thing where if you have a mentor that's selfish, it's not, it's not worth it <laughs> because we use ourselves, like use of self is our tool. Like we, I, as a person, I am my tool to go out there and, you know, be who I am and that's how you help people. <laughs> and so, um, if you're not learning skills to, to, you know, know where things, where sh people should go or where to get the resources, then, you know, I mean, I think that's my thing is I, I like to share all my knowledge that I have because one day you, you know, my, especially my intern is going to be my colleague. I want them to know where to go to help individuals. So, yeah. Absolutely. Great insights. Well, it actually leads me to my next question, which was about skill sets. So oftentimes in school, you know, we take classes and we're like, why am I having to take this class? Um, <laughs> but I'm curious, you know, now that you're, you know, working in the field and, and seeing things in real time, what are some of the most powerful skill sets, whether it's interpersonal or maybe technical, what, what skills come to mind when you think of, of the kind of the necessaries in social work? Um, really in social work, I mean, you know, it's interesting because just being comfortable with who you are and then, I mean, you know, accepting others for who they are is, is kind of, I think, a skill that has to be learned or you already have. Um, you can't put your, um, like, what your thoughts are on how you live your life or anything like that onto a client, a patient or anybody, um, you know, our job's not to make them see the world in our, through our eyes. Our job is to help them through how they see and how they live their life to live their best life. So really it's just humility. I would say, <laughs> yeah, and accepting, accepting that others are different and, it's okay. <laughs> I love that perspective of not pushing them to see life through your lens. I think that's a really key and really insightful um, uh, piece of advice for anybody in any profession, but I think that's, that's really helpful here. Um, great. Any other skills that come to mind in, in terms of social work? Um, I think with social work is one of those things like documentation is, you know, if your internship requires you to document a lot, you should be so happy <laughs> and ask as many questions as you can as to how to document because our job, the only way that we can report if we're doing our job is by our documentation. Um, because a patient could be, or a client could be doing amazing or they could be completely still failing to the status of, you know, or to what everyone else thinks they should be doing, that if you're not documenting, they think you're not doing your job, right? And if, yeah, so documentation, a skill that is very important in social work. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Well, and, and even just having that attention to detail and catching those mm -hmm. things. Yeah, it sounds really important. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. Okay, well, I want to move into a, a part that maybe is a little bit more fun. Um, but I would love to hear Christine, from your perspective, what are some of the pros, the things that you just absolutely love about your job? And maybe what are some of the, the challenges that you face in your work? Um, you know, the parts that I love about my job are being around others that are that are different that are have their own story right um and really kind of understanding I mean I think this is like kind of like what everyone always says in, in regards to social work I think Brene Brown says it all the time but it's not you know like that whole saying of what's wrong with you but like what happened to you like what happened when you were younger in your life that has led you to be where you are here now. And um, 
Yeah. And the other thing I always say is, is getting to know people, but also one thing I've always thought to myself is the day that I stop believing in people and stop believing that people can change is the day I probably should change my career. (laughs) (laughs) So, (laughs) which hasn't happened yet. So it's a good thing. (laughs) Yay. (laughs) But Yeah, absolutely. And on the flip side, I'd love to hear some of the challenges of maybe what, what makes this a hard profession? Um, I think uh, like the politics, not politics as in Paul politics, but like, um, right. The whole, um, you have to, um, I'm just trying to think like, there's so many, (laughs) but for instance, like for instance, just recently, um, the state hospital closed and we have very severely mentally ill people who need to go to the state hospital, but the Utah state hospital is understaffed. Um, you know, they, so they have to close a whole wing and, you know, then we have individuals going to jail because, you know, they're not doing well. I mean, that's just like one little avenue of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and so our prisons are, in a sense, our new holding cells for individuals who are mentally ill and potentially don't need to be there. And then there's the child welfare side of it, you know, like so much money is being put into foster care when, why aren't we helping people, you know, and not that that's not necessary. Sometimes I think it is, but, you know, it's yeah, just putting more money maybe into you know, like the children staying in the home and helping the family, but I don't know the funding, the money. It's like, you know, how do you, I wish I was a billionaire. So I could just be like, let me help everyone. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's what it comes down to. You know, I think the stigma of mental health and the stigma of poverty, the stigma, I mean, right now we're in a very difficult time in our <laughs> world you know I feel like there's a lot going on and yeah there's it it, it, there's a lot of toughness but I think the good outweighs (laughs) yeah the bad things so when you're working with people it's messy for the good and for the bad I suppose (laughs) yeah yeah but you know when you make a difference at least in one person's life it 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 make it just you forget about the other stuff and you're like okay this is great so (laughs) <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Great. Okay. Well, I'd love to move into a question that's more about um, kind of the logistics of what your working environment looks like. You know, sometimes we think about a job and we assume that means, you know, you're working uh, in a hospital or we assume it means you're working at a desk. In your position, what what does kind of the day-to-day of the, the actual work environment look like? So currently I am kind of like, in my own well it's not much space but I'm in a hospital so I'm literally in the hallway kind of as you come into the nurse's station and um you know I go out and I visit with patients if I need to talk to them about something or just meet with them for the first time um and I am surrounded by a lot of nurses doctors therapists and everyone who comes in and out, you know, the doors, technicians that also work with the patients. I mean, yeah, (laughs) we listen to music, you know, we, yeah. I mean, that's kind of what it, it it is now it, which is completely different than what it was when I worked at like DCFS where it was going into people's homes and, you know, you partnered up with another CPS worker and you would go out to their home and you would work with law enforcement and, you know, every, so yeah, it's a, it's a different, completely different scenario. <laughs> yeah. And you bring up a really good point that depending on kind of, again, the niche of, of social work that you choose to mm-hmm. move into, whether it's, you know, in the hospital setting or maybe private care, like that can really change the work environment. So that's a really good point to make, um, in, in terms of what it'll look like, but, um, mm-hmm. uh, Well, Christine, I I so appreciate the time that you spent with us today, the insights that you've brought to this conversation. Um, But I do want to close with one final question. And that question is, if you had to give one piece of advice uh, to a student who is interested in pursuing a a career in social work, what would it be? Oh, goodness. There's so many. (laughs) 
I'm trying to think, I think I probably already said it, but, um, and I, you know, I say this to all of my interns is, is network network is you don't have to be the expert in anything, but what your position is. And not even that you, it's a learning process. Every, I learn something new every single day, but network, um, put on your social work hat and literally be social. <laughs> I've learned that a lot of social workers are not very social. <laughs> They're very introverted. <laughs> I'm the exception for some <laughs> reason, <laughs> but networking, getting to know other people um, and talk about the hard stuff that you see, that you hear, that you're going through because in social work, we see a lot of good, but we see a lot of ugly and we have to talk about it and it's okay. Also, it's okay if you go to therapy, if you're a social worker. <laughs> so yes. I highly recommend it. <laughs> a great validation so. tip right there. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, well, Christine, again, thank you so much. So enjoyed our chat today and, and appreciate again, you taking the time to, to give some advice to some prospective uh, future professionals. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you. You have a great day. Thanks for having me. We hope you loved this episode of the USU Career Studio podcast. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and share this episode with your friends and family. 